So at this time, I want to introduce uh, head coach Tim Lester. Uh, coach Lester will be coaching his first game as a head coach here at Western Michigan, his 64th game overall as a head coach. And coach, just talk about the last couple months of preparation and uh, taking the reins as the head coach at Western Michigan. Well, it's, um, it's been a good camp, you know. It's been um, a longer camp, you know, with the, with the NCAA rule changes and the no doubles anymore. It's been, a, I want to say, a four-and-a-half-week camp, longest camp I've ever been a part of. And uh, But the guys did a good job. We gave more days off than we had to just to keep the legs fresh. And, um, you know, we're healthy, which is the number one rule of camp. Can you get out in one piece? And, uh, and we did. So, uh, so it's been exciting. I think our guys are ready. You get to that point right around practice 16, 17, 18, right where they're, they're sick of hitting each other. You know, it happens in spring ball too. And, uh, and it's time for us to, to have a chance to go, go play someone else. So we're, we're excited about that. Tim, Nick Buckley from Battle Creek Inquirer. Uh, update on Stephen Clark. Did you guys find out? Not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm trying not to bug Jeff Stone too much, <laughs> you know, but I, 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 once I get to my fifth text on the day, I let him go. But we're expecting to hear something, you know. Uh, we have him uh, ready to go. He, he will not travel on the plane. Uh, he can't travel on the plane if, he, if we don't hear it by then. Um, so he will we'll, we'll hopefully know by tomorrow morning at noon or tomorrow at noon. Uh, if not, if we hear after that, we can we'll get him on a plane and he'll get there by Saturday once we know, you know. So, uh, but most of the time, you know, like I said, part of that paperwork that you fill out for those type of uh, things with the NCAA is when are you leaving? So they know when we're leaving. They know we're leaving tomorrow. So we, we do expect to hear uh, today or tomorrow. And obviously that position group had a lot of turnover from last year. So uh, kind of saw from the depth chart, the guys you have plugged in, um, but how crucial is that just uh, obviously against a, a big offensive line like USC? Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. I mean, a guy that's played two years, started for two years in the ACC, uh, you know, for the, him to go play against, he's played against LSU and Clemson and Florida State. And, and so having him was definitely going to be a big plus um, if we have him. You know, if not, it's going to, you know, he'll be, we still got, we got to have a healthy rotation, you know, uh, especially on a, ga a game like this, it's going to be 90, 95 degrees. It's going to be hot. Uh, so you got to just up your rotations a little bit. It won't be a huge, I don't think it'll be a huge deal as long as you have the depth to rotate. And we do. Um, it's just a question of who's in that rotation, you know. And um, so there's, there's, you know, Des Lance is a young kid who I think is going to be a really good player and he'll probably play this year at some point. Uh, right now he is on the plane and him, him or Steven's on the plane, you know. So, uh, you know, we, I feel really good about Des too. Obviously he doesn't have the, the work of, of – uh, of Stephen Clark, you know, so he doesn't have the resume of Stephen Clark. So um, when we find out, we're, we're going to have to make that switch. And if we find out next week that Stephen can go, uh, you know, Stephen's going to be a really good player. And it's whether it's going to be this year or next year, or whether he has to sit out this year and it's uh, eighteen and yeah, eighteen and nineteen. It, it's uh, obviously we're hoping for sooner, but that's we've done everything we can do, and now you wait. Well, let's talk quarterbacks. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, is Watson ready? It's a big question. You know, I've been talking to him a ton. You know, the thing about John is that he's, he's the same guy every day. Never too high, never too low. I try to get him too high and too low. I mean, that's like my job is try to get him to laugh, try to get him to get mad, try to poke fun at him. Uh, and I can't get him. You know, he's, very, he's fairly even keel, you know. And that's what makes him good. You know, that's going to that's help him through the ups and downs of, of, of growing pains. You know, I mean, we, we can help him in so many ways. I've... Fortunately or unfortunately, however you decide to look at it, I have a lot of experience playing young quarterbacks from, from Hiller to, you know, we had a year at Syracuse and we went through four of them and I had a true freshman playing. Um, so, and we've had success with it. You know, you have to, you have to know it. You have to play a good defense. You got to run the ball. You got to keep him out of bad situations. So there's a lot our team can do to help John. Um, but John's demeanor can help himself. You know, not getting too high, not getting too low. So I don't, I don't think he's going to let his nerves get in the way. For him, it's just going to be the speed. The speed of the game, the first time you go out there, is unlike anything you're ever used to. You know, and eventually it slows down for you. But uh, so that will be the big thing for him is just getting him out there, uh, trying to help him. He's surrounded by a lot of really good players. Um, but that will help his development. Is how fast can we get John to develop? And that's really what we need to figure out. You know, do everything we can to get it to be – as fast as humanly possible, because there's going to be growing pains. I mean, that's just reality. Um, but just to support him and, 
and know that he won't let his emotions make the lulls too long and he won't let his emotions keep the highs too high. You know what I mean? He needs to keep getting back to that steady Eddie making good decisions. On the other side of that, Darnold, this is kind of kick off his Heisman campaign. Yeah, he's, he's a, a good, he's fun to watch. I mean, I've enjoyed watching him as a quarterback guy. I love watching quarterback play. Um, you know, the thing, he, he can beat you from the pocket. He's smart. He's, he's got good eye control. Um, the thing that's most special about him is he can extend plays. For a 6'4", six, 6'5", six, kid, uh, he has an unbelievable ability, what I call in phase two, in the pocket moving around and then getting out of the pocket and creating plays. So I mean, you watch you watch him, and he, he makes a lot of good plays in the pocket. I'm not trying to take anything away from him in the pocket, but when he gets out of there, when he when he breaks the tackle and spins out and he turns three-second plays into five-second plays, uh, it's hard to cover the receivers for three seconds. Uh, you try to cover them from five, and it's really hard, you know. So he's just he, he is a very unique ability to extend plays and that's one thing we got to make sure our rush lanes are full uh, keep him in the pocket as much as possible he'll get out because that's what he does but we have to try to keep him in there but he's he reminds me you know john as far as demeanor wise reminds me i mean i always like sam watching him as a quarterback guy who loves watching quarterbacks play um when they won the rose bowl and he walked off the sideline like ho-hum like it was just another day in the office uh i mean i already liked him i thought i loved him from that moment i was like I love this kid. You know, I just like the way he handled that situation, you know. And uh, little did I know we'd be playing him in eight months. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of how John is too, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm going to watch him warm up. I've done that since my beginning of my career. I always w- love watching the quarterbacks of the other team throw it and you just get to see how, you know, how talented they are. And um, But he's, he's going to be – he's got the game slowed down for him, I'm sure. You know, so he'll definitely be in a situation where – where he'll be more more relaxed and, and, and hopefully it's starting to, for him, build his second season, you know, and hopefully we can make it as difficult as humanly possible on that. Coach uh, Alan Jill, Rocco Blitz, um, I, I've done some scouting of Southern Cal myself. <laughs> their front seven is amazing. They're, they're really tough. And if you like long and fast, yeah. Yeah, they, they're all that, and, they, and they're very deep, too. It's yep. fair, they've got 12 kids that can hold team in that front yep. seven. Uh, I'm the strength of our team, unquestionably, at least going into the season, is a running game. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be kind of man on man, you know, their best against our best. Well, even the way the game plan, how do you intend to attack that whole thing? I mean, the, the rubber's got to meet the road somewhere. You know, we're going we're gonna to run what we run. We're going to see. I, I feel really confident about our O line and our tight ends. I think they're full through. I think we can run the ball. You know, I think we're going to try. We're going to try to run the ball. Never matter who we play, we can play the the Dallas Cowboys, and we're going to try to run the ball, especially with the rookie quarterback. You know, uh, but the proof of being the pudding there is is how we how we can you know if we can grind out two, three, four. You know, we'll keep them honest with the passing game, and we have enough speed to hopefully get on the edges here and again. And we're not going to live on the edges against USC. You know. Uh, Speed-wise, because they got great team speed. Uh, but if we, if you run it enough and get them to pack the box, we got to we got to get outside or over the top. You know, um, it, it comes down to just like every other game in America. Uh, if you can find a way to run the ball, they have to you know hopefully load the box to stop you. You know, and if they have to load the box to stop you, you got some opportunities outside. You know, but uh, if they can just play base coverage and sit back and stop our running game, then we're going to be in trouble every game. You know. Uh, so that's going to be a key point because they are strong there and deep, and, yeah. and that's our strength as well. So it's going to be strength on strength, and that'll be that'll be fun to see. That being said, uh, how is Anton and Keyshawn and, and the D coming along? The, they they've done unbelievable. I mean, they really have. They are uh, they've been probably the three most improved guys in Geo to uh, Ricci. Uh, I mean, those four from from spring ball to now are by far the most improved guys on our team. You know, they got together in the summertime after learning Coach KJ's offense, Coach John's, and and they're like new guys. They're running faster. They're they're more comfortable. They're getting out of breaks. They're finishing. They're finishing plays. You know, they they were learning to run routes in the in the spring, and now they're coming back to the ball, extending for the ball, doing all the little things that it, that it takes to, to be a receiver at this level. You know, so. Uh, but, you know, it'll still be one of their first Saturdays. You know, Keyshawn's been out there a little bit, made some plays. He made a big play at Central last year. You know, great catch. Um, so, and D's, caught, D's been in it here and there. You know, so they're, they, they've been, I've been, they, 
extremely excited about the way that they've come. You know, and I, would, I mean, I also think they have a, they have a tough sled, and when they go out there against, you know, Beal and, and uh, Phillips every day, and they don't, they they don't they're not given any freebies every right. single day. You know, I think they're going against two of the better cover guys I've seen. You know, so uh, you can't get open uh, against four or number one uh, unless you're running a really good route and doing all the little things right. You know. And um, so it'll be it'll be a big challenge for them. I know they're excited about it. They worked hard for this opportunity. Coach uh, Patrick on that front online and the Kalamazoo Gazette. Um, can you talk um, a little bit about any captains? Have you named any for this year? No, I won't. I mean, I I, I believe I don't I don't personally. I, I know the captain things is a big deal, and I and the way I have done it the places I've been is I don't feel like four people is enough leaders on a team. Four people to run 103 doesn't make any sense to me. Um, we, have a, we have a leadership group of 20 guys that I will rotate captains every week. You know, me as a quarterback, I hated being a – I hated going out there for the coin toss because I wanted to play catch for the last minute. You know, when I came out of the tunnel, I was getting a ball, and I was playing catch. I was not going to go say heads or tails and point a direction. You know, uh, that was me. So I never went out for a coin toss in 44 games. So – so we'll rotate. Now, at the end of the year, we'll probably vote on captains, like who are the four guys that you guys are – and that will be a big honor for those four that earn their captainship. But as far as leaders go, uh, I, we got 20, 22 of them technically on our leadership council, and I haven't, I haven't announced the guys that are going to go out there yet. Uh, but I, I just think that the more leaders I have, the better. So to single out four of them this early, uh, I don't know. I've just never prescribed to that, you know. Um, but we will have captains at the end, so that will be an honor for those guys. But it will be a different different group. And I'm going to ask on Friday of who's going to go out there and and pick heads or tails, you know. Coach, you haven't, um, you know, this switch over from the P.J. Fleck regime to the, to the Tim West regime has been seem, seemingly very smooth and, uh, you know, you're just kind of building on, you know, we've discussed building on what P.J. got built here. We got, we've got a new offensive coordinator, Kevin Jones, new yep. defense coordinator, Tim Bass. What will we see different on offense and defense? Uh, a lot of the same. Where will It'll be different? very similar but different. Yeah, there'll be some definitely some differences. I, I think offensively, you know, with Coach Johns, I mean, we'll always have the ability to go fast. You know, and um, we won't do it a ton. You know, I think Kirk had the same ability. He'd get up fast. I mean, they never huddled, but they ne they didn't necessarily go fast either. You know what I mean? Um, I think I think KJ does a good job of, of using the entire field, you know, and um, you know, hopefully, run game wise, we're running the same plays. I mean, they're they're just different names. I, I don't so offensively, other than maybe uh, personnel wise, doing a couple personnel things differently, uh, it'll be very similar. Um, I think that Kirk might have done the same things we're doing this year with this personnel. Corey Davis changes your offense a little bit. You know what I mean? So some of the things you saw last year, well, you know, we, we, we won't do, you know. Um, so so offense will be really similar. Defensively it will be a little different. I, I think it's a, structurally it's the same. Um, you know, I think, we'll be, I think we'll be aggressive. You know, I, I know that, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll try to get to the quarterback when we can. And stop, we'll stop the runs, number one thing that everyone's going to try to do, you know. But um, – you know, with with a young quarterback, you're going to have to let your defense breathe a little bit and put put some put some pressure on the opposing receivers, put some pressure and load the box and see what see if you can force their hand a little bit. You know, um, and I think that's that will be the. But it, structurally, it's the same. You know, last year offensively, you control we controlled the ball really well. Defense kind of sat back, kept everything in front of them, uh, which works when you when you can lead the. I mean, the, the most impressive stat about the 2017 Western Michigan Broncos is they were. I think it was fourth in the country in time of possession and still scored 42 points a game. That's that's astronomical. You know, normally you get the time of possession is lower points, you know, higher points, low time of possession, you know. So the fact that they were able to do that really allowed the defense to kind of do, you know, had a lead a lot, keep everything in front of you, you know. Um, so obviously we'd love to be that. We'd love to, to hold it for 40, 40 minutes and score 45 points. Uh, with a with a young quarterback, you know we're gonna we're gonna still try to control the ball, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna let our defense breathe a little bit because I think we got eight returning starters, a lot of experience, so uh, so we're gonna hopefully lean on them a little bit more as we as they develop as a unit. Looking at your last the, the team's last three games against top ranked opponents, uh, Ohio State, Michigan State, Wisconsin, they, the Western's been in every game. 
unfortunately didn't come out on the winning end, but um, I mean, is there such thing as moral victory? Can you go against like a uh, top tier team like that? You know, I, I would say if this were my my twentieth game here, I would say no. You know, since it's my first, I mean, we're we're gonna learn a ton about ourselves. You know what I mean? So it'll be. You know, our job is to just worry about it. We don't really look big picture at anything. We don't look at practice big picture. We don't look at anything like, what's your record going to be? I'm just trying to get through today, you know. And then we get, we have a flight tomorrow, you know. So you really just, you don't allow yourself, you know, as a quarterback, you, it's like play by play by play by play. You don't even remember the last one. It's crazy when you get yourself in that mindset. But that's kind of the mindset we're in, you know. So for me, it'll be, it'll be about, you know, having a good first drive. You know, and, and making sure we're doing the things we if we do the things we need to do, we should look around late and hopefully be in the game, and then then it'll be fun. You know, um, but there's so many things. So I would say there's never a moral victory, but I think we're going to learn a ton, which I'm looking forward to learning about what we're going to be. What is John going to be like? You know, I have tons of confidence in him, but we'll, it'll be fun to see. And what's what's our speed going to look like? And how are we going to play up front? And and how's our defense going to be? And how is our covering? Are we going to be able to get after the passer? So. There's so much we can learn, you know, about ourselves. So I think there's going to be positive things out of this game, regardless. Um, but you're right, as far as winning and losing, you know, hanging in there doesn't doesn't do you much good. You know, once you get once you're in the, getting late in the game and you're in it, I mean, you got to do everything you can to win it, you know. And, and that's what that's what we're going to do. Coach, you have a second team um, all mac tight end coming back for a senior year. Um, he showed that he's capable of catching the ball last year. Do you expect to use it? How do you expect to use that? This year. I know he's in the room, so I don't know what it's Oh, I didn't even know he's in the room. <laughs> Hi, Donnie. Uh, and I've told him this. I mean, I want him to do everything. You know, I've everywhere I've been, we've used the tight end a ton. Obviously, Coach Moreland is the guy I threw more balls to than anybody who's our all-line coach right now. Um, but, you know, with, with the run game the way we had it and with Corey Davis, I mean, there just weren't enough balls to go around last year. You know, you, you, you go to the your go-to guys. I expect him to be a go-to guy. I don't think there's linebackers that can cover him. I don't think there's – because I don't I think he's faster than most linebackers, and I don't think their safeties are too small to cover him. So you got to match up regardless, you know. Um, but there, there, there weren't a ton of balls thrown his way last year for whatever reason, you know. And, and so – so I, I do expect more to be going his way, and you've been working on that, and 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 our route combinations and where that where he fits in there, you know. But he's done a heck of a job. I mean, there's no doubt he'll he'll block. I mean, he's going to be a physical <laughs> dude out there. Uh, but he does so many other things that people haven't had a chance to see. You know, you see it on his catches. I think he had nine catches, and uh, and he and he's hurdling people. He's doing yeah. some amazing things when he catches it. It's just he only had nine. You know, um, so so we're definitely planning on, on changing that. You know. I see some freshmen on the two deep, and uh, I mean kicker. Freshman <laughs> yeah. The Coliseum, that's kind of a big. Um, yeah. So, I, how have you kind of have you done anything unique with him to kind of prepare for the the atmosphere? Yeah, we've we've tried to. I mean, we've we've we brought everybody out around him a couple times, and and I purposely on every single two minute drill we've done during camp, I've never said, "Hey, two minute drill, we're down six, we got to score." It's always been two minute drill down two, because I always want it to end in a field goal. You know. Uh, not that I don't want our offensive guys to be really good at two-minute drill. I want to get into field goal range and put him in a position to kick it, you know. And I iced him a couple times on purpose, you know, just just to see how he would do. And uh, he's done a great job. I mean, his his get-off time is amazing. He gets the pops the ball up in the air, which is great. Um, you know, we just working on consistency. He he percentage-wise, he's he's been the highest percentage we have. Um, he just got. We got to get him there and calm him down. I mean, he is from Texas. He's played in big stadiums, high school stadiums, but still, it's about as big as you get down there. And uh, and I know he's excited. You know, the guys, the guys have, have welcomed him and and they have his back. You know, so uh, you know he missed. God, I, I'm giving him some long ones now just to put some pressure on him. You know, and uh, he missed the first two really long ones. And then once he buried one, I don't know if he's missed since. I mean, he's now he's got a little bit of confidence going on him. You know. And he knows that even when he did miss, we were all, you know, we, we supported him 100%. Because I'm going to, if, we have, if he, has, he has the leg to get it there, if he has the leg to get it there, I'm going to throw him out there. And I'm going to do it again and again and again, you know, because I have, I have faith in him, you know. So he's done a good job. What's his long been during ball camp? Oh, probably 53. Oh, wow. 52, 53. He hit one. Yeah, it was. And then it, I gave him a couple of those, and he, he, he missed left twice. But it, distance wasn't an issue. It was just can he hit it straight that far, you know, because uh, it, it comes off his leg pretty good.
Is he doing the kickoffs? No, no, Derek. Derek's he's just he's really he, you gotta take you gotta go with the wisdom. Uh, yeah, he's putting too. He's putting. Yeah, he's he said he's a he's a weapon. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do with him. From um, you know, we we do all different types of punts, obviously, and um, and kickoffs, and there's there's sky kicks, there's deep. I mean, and he's he's just consistent with everything we do. You know, he can do everything. Yeah, yeah, he's a holder. I mean, and that's a big job. Yeah. You know, we, we really struggled. You know, we, we came in early and we brought our, our freshmen in a couple of days before our varsity. So, and the number one thing we wanted to see out of the freshmen was can Josh kick? That was the number one thing with us, like, get him out there. We didn't really have a holder. No one had ever held before. And he struggled because the holds were, you know, and then once Derek got here and got him and Derek together, Derek calmed him down. You know, there's no better person to send your rookie kicker out there with than a 30-year-old, you know, <laughs> guy who's played professional sports and, and married he's and married. calm. And, you know, he's just, he, you know, nothing's too big for him. So they're a good combo to put out there together because Derek, I think, brings the, the calmness to the whole thing. Ron Swanson, Wood TV, I'm just curious, what do you think some of the bigger challenges that USC will present? You know, their they're speed, I mean, they're, they're a fast team. Uh, you know, I think our keys are, are going to be, you know, can we control them up front? You know, are we able to get to get Jar and Jamari and, and, and get those Bellamy going? Can we get the ball in their hands and give them some space to do something and, and as opposed to getting them bottled up? That'll be the big thing um, offensively. And that if we can do that, then we'll keep uh, – because they're really good cover guys. I mean, they do a good job. But – can't can we put them in a situation where we can get some matchups isolated? You know, if you can't run the ball, you'll never get matchups. If you can run the ball, you get. Send plays. I mean, those are going to be the big things. As I watch the game, is you know, are we able to grind out first downs our way? You know, without having to go, you know, nothing, nothing, third and ten, hit one because you're not going to live on the third and tens. You might hit one, but you're not going to live on that. You know, so that that's really the two things that, I, that I'm willing, that I'm excited to see is the run game on both sides and and when they do pass because I know they'll have a, they'll be a little bit more aggressive to drop him back. Um, I mean, if he has a chance to win the Heisman, you don't get nervous about dropping that guy back. Um, so you know, can we keep him from extending plays on us? You know, so those are going to be, I think, the keys to us being able to to uh, win. How excited are you to, to get out on the field? I'm excited. I mean, I just want to play. You know, that's the biggest thing. It's 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 one of those points where well, I've been here for eight months, almost nine months now, and uh, and the guys have been excited for this game. To me, it, would, it could be any game, to be honest with you, just to get back out there on the sideline and, and watch these guys compete, you know. And, uh, yeah, obviously being able to wear the logo and everything. I mean, I'm, but being – the Coliseum, it's going to be awesome. It has a lot of history. I don't know if any of our kids understand it. I know our players. Um, but, you know, having having played at Clemson and all, I mean, it, the place doesn't matter to me. Just being able to run out there with the guys that we've been working so hard for nine months and, and they've been waiting to kind of get out there and show what they can do at this level, um, you know, that's going to be the most exciting part. Once the kickoff starts and we get into the rhythm of, of a game, uh, which is something that we'll eventually get used to, but everything that everything we're doing, that's one thing that's the best and worst part of my job right now is everything we do is the first time. This is our first time here, and then I'll be a lot more comfortable. Next, maybe I won't wear a tie. Uh, but like everything's the first time. Tomorrow's our first flight. You know, it'll be our first pregame. It'll be you know, so everything's the first, and then eventually it's no big deal. Our first training camp schedule was like crazy, and then by day two, it's it's a lot more fun because you're relaxed and everyone knows where they're going and. So once we can kick off and get going, I think it'll be uh, it'll allow everyone to just relax and go do what we love to do. Uh, Darius Phillips is a guy that you've mentioned has uh, some next level potential to play on Sundays. Um, has he or any of his uh, secondary teammates shown some excitement about being able to face a guy like Sam Darnold who projects to be a uh, first round draft pick? Yeah, I think I, they're excited. You know, they, they're up to the challenge, and they're they're. They, I mean, if you're if you're a real competitor, the way I always tell it to the team, if you're a real competitor, you want to play the best. I mean, that's what you want. You know, the way I always reference it is, hey, when you were a kid and you were in your driveway shooting hoops, and you were counting the clock down, you know, you were never like, hey, we're up thirty, three, two, one. You know, it's always we're down one. You know what I mean? Like that's what you want, and so. Uh, so that's the fun part. That's the challenging part of it. And, and uh, Darius, really our whole secondary, but Darius in particular, he is, 
He's got special ball skills now. I mean, he, he does things out there still. That I don't even see him coming. And he'll come from the back and he can get his hand on a ball. Right when he's like, well, that's an easy completion. And Darius comes out of nowhere. So he's, uh, he's a special player. And I know, you know, these guys are excited about the opportunity to play. Yeah, but I've told them the same thing. It's going to be about us. It's going to be, can we get our run game going? Can we play our defense the right way? You know, can we play our coverages the right way? Can we run our blitz lines, you know? Um, in a first game of a new offense, new defense, new <laughs> new everything, uh, it's going to be about worrying about us and, and not get all 100% dialed into who we're playing. As we get, As we go along, we'll get more and more dialed into that, but... This game especially is about how can we do at executing our stuff, you know, and that'll be that'll be a big factor for for how good we can be all year. Coach, just real quick to wrap this up, if you could just kind of touch on, as you stated, the team is flying out tomorrow, and then um, some of the practices, other activities that the team will experience the next couple of days um, out in Los Angeles. It's going to be a heck of a trip. I can tell you that, as you know. Uh, we are we leave tomorrow at uh, noon and fly out. We land about 2 o'clock Pacific time, and uh, we will go straight to the hotel. We're staying in Burbank, at the Marriott in Burbank, where a lot of the uh, Rose Bowl teams stay. It's a beautiful hotel. Uh, we have practice tomorrow morning. At, not tomorrow morning, sorry, Wednesday, Thursday morning at um, Burbank High School. They have they've, they've allowed us to go out there. And then we have a couple of special things planned. We're going to go to Universal Studios uh, Thursday afternoon. Thursday night we have a we have an alum that lives in Beverly Hills that's having the whole team over, which is going to be yeah it's going to be fun. Uh, former player. Former player, yeah. And uh, and then on you know on Friday we'll practice in the morning again, and then Friday afternoon uh, we're going to take him to a movie, a screening, a, spe a super special secret screening of a movie that's not out yet, which would be pretty cool. Uh, which of course are that same guy set up for us, you know. Um, so I think the kids are going to enjoy it. I mean, I asked the guys the other day how many guys, ha you know, have been to L.A. and like four guys rose. I mean, none of them have been, you know. So, and some guys will never go back. So we're definitely trying to take advantage. You know, we did it so that they, if this would be an experience for our student athletes. And we're having a guy uh, like our alum that's out there. I mean, he's going to make it pretty darn special for uh, coaches and all of us, you know. Um, but then, then it ended up being, you know, you see the you see the weather, and it's going to be hotter and hotter, and it's great that we're going to be there for three days and to acclimate to it. That's the hardest part is just getting your body used to it, you know. So we're gonna we're gonna practice in it on Thursday. We're gonna practice in it on Friday. So it's actually working out really good that we've been able, and, it, and it's just a unique year that school starts next week, or we wouldn't be able to do something like this. So I know the kids are excited about all the different things we're going to see, but um, yeah, I just don't want them sitting around a hotel room all day thinking about game one, game one guy. I want to keep busy because they're used to being busy and uh, and have a little fun together too. We can experience something that, that none of us have, or very few of us have ever experienced uh, together, which will be good in the long run. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And at this point, we'll bring up uh, oh, senior tight end, oh, Alan Benton's second team all Mac last year. Um, made some big catches for the Broncos in 2016. Uh, looking for a few more balls his way this year. Uh, Donnie, if you just kind of want to touch on just uh, training camp, how's that gone over well, um, overall, and then just kind of the team's kind of mood mentality headed into Saturday at USC. Uh, training camp, you know, we uh, started a new quarterback, John Wassing, and um, I think that's where it all started. Uh, he came out big time. Um, his confidence level is high. He delivers the ball where it needs to be, and he's like the new heart of our offense. Um, our preparation has been key to coming into a big game like this. Um, Coach Lester has us uh, preparing with their fight song at practice, and... Um, <laughs> the loud band noises and like the crowd and whatnot so we go silent counts and stuff like that to like help that out and um, our preparation has been amazing could not ask for a more well thought out opportunity that he's uh, given us in practice. Danny, um, you know the Coliseum is a great venue and all but talk about how playing at Spartan Stadium or having you know, playing at the big horseshoe 
uh, playing at Memorial Stadium in Illinois, playing in Jerry World, you know, how those venues helped you play or prepare for, because a lot of, we got a lot of experience of in those venues. Uh, I mean, they definitely helped a lot. Um, they've given us like a good opportunity to, you know, get ourselves out there, get our names out there. We played in all those games, we showed up. Uh, we don't really uh, plan on just showing up to this game. We, could, we plan on coming in and, you know, putting our foot down and showing them what we have, so. A lot's been made about your contributing more to the passing game this year. We know you can block, we know you can catch, but like Coach said, we weren't as many ball, enough balls to go around. Can you talk about uh, how you're clicking with John Watson and how you expect to be a part of the passing game this year? Yeah, like I said, John Watson, his confidence is amazing. He comes in, he delivers the ball where it needs to be, and Coach Lester told me as a former quarterback um, that timing and uh, ball placement beats good coverage. So uh, if I'm just right in the right spot, I'm sure John will put the ball in there where it needs to be. So. On a personal note, uh, one of my inside sources told me that you and Jeremy and Franklin were both have the same type of watchdog. Oh, yeah. Can you comment on that? Yeah, we both got uh, little chihuahuas. Oh. <laughs> His name's Waldo and mine's Bronco. Okay. So yeah, we kind of tagged off each other on that one. And uh, they are watchdogs, I'll tell you what. You know, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll alert you when anybody's walking down the hallway or anything, so. Hey, Danny, I know you've been played at a tight end position, but you're also a big part of the special teams you've been, especially last year with some big hits. What, um, give us a kind of an idea of what goes into kickoff, kickoff return, those type of things. Uh, so kicking game is very important in what we do, you know, field, um, field position and the possession of the football is, you know, key in this game. And, um, you know, we've spread out the, uh, the jobs throughout the coaching staff this year of handling the special teams. And, you know, they take their, they put their heart into the work and that's what we try to give back. We try to give our heart into the work, um, our time, we watch our film on it, you know, we treat it just as special as we treat our offense or defensive film, you know, we get in there and we have to figure out what they're doing and their tendencies, so. It must be nice to know you got Darius back there, so if you just get a little seam here, you know, on a, on a good block, he's going to be a good Oh, yeah, definitely. He's got the speed. He's got the confidence. Um, his ball skills are amazing. All you need is, you know, a foothold, and he's gone, you know, so he's dangerous back there, and it's, it's great to have him. So. We see uh, Max schools upset. Big time slow, just like you guys did last year. Um, these Power Five conference schools. Is there, I mean, is there anything to do? Players aren't looking past you guys. Obviously, you're all Division One athletes, but um, I mean, you're a no-star guy coming out of high school, and they got five-star guys, four-star guys. Saying that matter? No, I think it's just like a lot of the media, you know, um, just gets their names out there for them and whatnot. Some people are underground type players, you know, just nitty-gritty type players that'll do whatever it takes and it doesn't really mean as much you know it's not a we don't prepare for this game any differently than we do another game and uh, we take it just as serious and if not more serious and we're ready to go in there and show them what we got so Danny you know, we obviously had a lot of success over PJ Fleck this new coaching staff that's come in can you talk about the differences if there are any because it seems to be a pretty smooth transition? Uh, yeah, so there are differences uh, in the coaching staff from last year and this year. And no, I mean, coming from myself and the rest of the team, we couldn't be more happy with the coaching staff we have now. Uh, the relationships they've built since they came in here, since day one, uh, you know, taking their time out of their day and their own family lives at home to come and connect with us outside of football. You know, they meet with us, you know, we sit down and have dinner, cookouts, and things like that. You know, that really helps out and helps us, like, be able to be more coachable on the field, you know, when we have a personal connection to them. And I think they've done a great job with that. And, you know, I still have Coach Kenny back, and, you know, he's like a father figure to me, right. you know. So that's great to have him. And we also have Coach Duggan on the defensive side, you know, that just, you know, right. just tags along a little bit from last year. But this year is just... It's not completely different, but I like it a lot. So does the team. So, are you one of the guys who to LA or California? Yeah, I've never been out there. I can't.
can't wait to get out of there. We've got some fun activities planned. So, do you think it's going to be kind of hard to uh, you know focus on having fun and enjoying spending the uh, you know sunshine with your teammates, or do you think that your mind is probably just going to gravitate toward the Saturday game? Uh, I know we'll definitely have fun because that's all, like our locker room. I think is has got to be the best out there because our connection with each other. No, there's not one person on the team that doesn't like another. You know, you can get along with everybody out there, and um, we'll definitely have fun. But uh, it's football, you know. You you live to play this game, and that's all we like to do. So I mean, our minds will definitely be there while we're out having fun. So.